to the agenda for this night. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Now we need a motion to adopt the agenda and the consent agenda as amended. We need to have another motion for the consent agenda, though. That's what I had put in. Okay. Yeah, I think we're... Okay. So I'll look to approve the consent agenda. I'll second it. And move to second to approve the consent agenda as well as our previous action to approve the agenda. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Nay. Yes, without a little discussion, please. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I know it's been brought up before about what we pay out in attorney fees. Oh. And, uh, I finally had an opportunity to go go through the register, and I can have a notice that we retain an attorney at fifty five hundred dollars a month, and we're also paying roughly thirty eight hundred dollars a month for other attorney fees. Uh, if I could have that justified, that would appreciate it. And that's, that's on top, that is not counting uh, Mankey Jackson out of Yakima. So you start adding up these attorney fees, and this is per month. This is every month. Mm -hmm. And I understand we got to have the services. We do. We do. But I'd like, I'd like to have them justified. Well, part of the, uh, the additional money that has been on attorneys this month, uh, possibly last month as well, has to do with personnel matters that have been actually it discussed. Doesn't, it doesn't play in at all. Oh, it doesn't? Okay. No. It's all done pre-defense. It does not. Oh, okay. It's part of our insurance policy, insurance carriers benefit to the, okay. to the, to the members. So which ones are you looking at? Well, right here, uh, Smith. Smith is janitorial. Yes. Okay, well, came up different. Linda, Linda Gage, no. Linda Gage, and Lori Lynn no. Hochter, I believe, are defense attorneys. Okay. So, I don't know, Lori Hochter is, what's the other name? The other name is Linda Goge? 
Yeah, that's also the public defender attorneys. Public defender attorneys. That's a new name on me, but I know. That was just this last month. Okay, oh, yeah. yeah. Lori Hawk, yeah, I know she is. Those are criminal defense attorneys. So we're in quiet yeah. okay. Uh, okay. Animal Hospital. Oh, oh yeah, I, I justified some of this myself. I just went to the Vance is also public. Okay, so what does Gwendolyn do? <coughs> She's the prosecuting attorney. Prosecuting attorney, so we're paying to prosecute and defend. Yes. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Very interesting. That's the law. Interesting. That's for when people can't afford their own defense. Correct. Right? Correct. And yeah, you're required to. Which, which is most of the time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, I understand. I Prime doesn't pay for them or us. Prime doesn't pay for them or us. That's true. <laughs> All right. Well, I was kind of curious about uh, the UV doctor lamps. Airport. Sandy says it's up in the airport. That's the airport, huh? Okay. And yes, I, uh, yeah, I just tried the other ones myself. Okay. We'll talk about the airport later. Yeah, I'm going to be coming up on the issues to be mentioned. Anything else, Steve? Uh, no, not at this moment. Okay, thank you. There's so many times that that. Uh, Legal consultation keeps us where we're not getting into trouble as a city administration. It's, it's protecting the budget in a lot of ways. The next item on the agenda is presentations and Jay Green, uh, Jay Olson from Fireworks is going to present on the uh, fireworks for the 4th of July. Yes, sir. Good evening. Good evening. That time of year again, I'm here with the Lions Club. Just touching bases with you on the uh, firework sale. I believe you have copies of the business license and the uh, insurance yes. forms there. Is there anything else we need to provide? Is there anything else we need to know? <laughs> when are you going to be selling the fireworks? Fire. What's the time frame you're going to be selling the fireworks? When's the time state. frame we're going <laughs> to sell the fire? I remember the state, they, they go by state regulation yeah. or statute, and uh, I think, I believe they can start selling them uh, July, or June 28th through uh, the close of July 4th or 5th, one of the two. Right. It's That's in the state statute, I'd have to. Yeah. Three or four days ahead of time, and, it, and maybe one day after. One day after, yeah. But I'll look that up and get you a definite answer here. That, That's something we don't control. <laughs> I think it should be made clear, though, that the sale of fireworks is not the same time frame as the <laughs> discharge of fireworks. <laughs> I, I think that's all taken care of. I, uh, you people, that uh, the police, have done a good job of, of getting that information <coughs> out in the past, and so I assume that'll happen again. What locations will, will the fireworks be set off? Pardon? What, lo what, what locations will the fireworks be set off? No, this is we're, we're just, just we're just, just doing selling. The selling. We're okay. just okay. we're just doing the selling. We yeah. aren't gotcha. we aren't setting any of them off. I guess that's up to city where we're really going to have it. In fact, we're just sponsoring the selling. We don't gotcha. physically we don't even do that. Right. Yeah. I hear you. Thank you. Thank you. We've had good cooperation from the residents of Coverdale on these restrictions of when they can be used as fireworks. Right. So. Yeah, so, well, yeah, that's what I say. Most of that is just in your and not ours. So, the cooperation is good. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have this. Uh, Anything else that I can do or convey? Any of the questions, Council, or comments? Okay. Thank Fire you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Fireworks will be purchased June 28th or July 5th. It's July 5th, okay. Per RCW. 70.77.395. The record should show, I think Sandy has it, June 28th through July 
fit. Okay. The next item on presentations uh, is an airport update from our consultant, uh, Corley McFarland. Is Corley? Yeah, Corley's on here. Larry, did you want anything before we close? Uh, we actually talked a little bit this afternoon and talked about some, just giving us, <coughs> giving the council an update on the airport construction work that's being done, Good. which the amendment to the agenda tonight is also uh, in line with that discussion. Exactly. Uh, and then we also thought we, we've been getting a lot of interest at the airport, a lot of questions, a lot of questions about planning and use of the property and things like that. Uh, and as we'll find out a little bit later, we're kind of in a lull right now because of supply chain issues. We can't get certain materials here. So we thought maybe it's time to, to have an airport committee meeting and, and talk about planning and things like that that we can move forward on maybe hangar development uh, and other potential uses of the airport. And so he's going to talk a little bit about that. Good, good. Go ahead, Corley. Thanks, Corley. Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me all right in your can? Okay. Yes. Perfect. So just kind of, yeah, I was going to give a quick briefing, no formal presentation or anything tonight, but just a briefing of where things have gone since we all left off in March of this year. And at that point, we had opened the rebid for the site development portion of the fuel system at the Goldendale Air Municipal Airport. And the city council approved moving forward with contracting with m and excavation. And so since, like I said, since March, we've gone through, we've got m and under contract, and we're in the submittal review process. What we've run into in getting submittals approved and ordered is one of the electrical cabinets specific to the fuel system is about a 15-week lead time. So we've reviewed the contractor's product, given them approval to order it, but we're, we're about 12 weeks out, give or take, we're on a firm commitment yet, but 12 weeks out, give or take, from receiving that cabinet. And so there's only so much work that the contractor can do in advance of that, so we're working with the contractor and once we have a firm delivery date for that cabinet, then we'll decide how far in advance of that the contractor can start the rest of the site development work. So I think we're probably about eight, eight weeks or so out from where it makes sense to start that project for the, for the construction. Good. So a little, little longer than we'd hope, but just, I mean, this is, this is a problem we're seeing a lot of projects and across the across the industry the, the good thing i think for this group right as we've awarded that contract we've locked in the prices and so yes the time delays um, aren't ideal but at least at least we've got that under contract and those prices locked in the other part I want to give an update on is status with click attack and the pud and uh, the electrical service that they're going to install so, as kind of a reminder for this group, the fuel system changed locations um, the end of last year. We moved it a little bit to the east, closer to some of the existing infrastructure. And so that necessitated regrouping with PUD and getting an updated quote from them for their power service installation that's going to provide power to the fuel system. And so we received that last month. And that in or that quote from PUD, it, it's in line with what we thought it would be. It's thirteen thousand, just under thirteen thousand eight hundred dollars. And so I, I just wanted to bring that up tonight as a as a quote that we would recommend moving forward with with PUD to install that power line. Okay. And what? the. Unfortunately, there's a little bit of supply chain issue there as well. At the end of this power feed, the PUD will install a transformer, and at present, they don't have a, the necessary transformer in the stock. So we'll also have a better timeline update once we execute the agreement with PUD. Corley, before you leave cons uh, the construction update, 
Do you know the current status of the fuel tank system? Is it ready to go? Well, the skid should be all but in final fabrication. I have not seen a, seen approval of the tank because that's a subcontractor. So I can take that as an action item, Larry, to see where we are on the tank and, and make sure that that's on track. My last check-in with the fuel system equipment provider and again, come to the group's benefit. We have two contracts here. We have one for the fuel system equipment, the fuel tank and the fuel pump and the card reader, and then one for all the site development and electrical work. And so the contract with the fuel system equipment provider, they were on track to have everything in July, but I was very well that goes next time and just make sure we're we're tracking with this new site development schedule. Thank you. Thank you, Corley. Council, do you have comments or questions for Corley? Well, Corey, it just it sounds to me that once the construction is done, the, the fuel tank will be ready. Is that maybe that's what your hopes are? Well, yeah, that's definitely been our intent the whole time. And, and it's an interesting game of timing. We don't want to get the fuel tank done too far in advance because then the fuel tank vendor wants to charge us storage fees to keep it in their yard. We don't want to bring it out to the site, not have a place, not have the finished foundation to put it on. So. We're, okay. we're coordinating that as best we can, but yeah, very much our intent, and I'll, I'll report back to Larry, and he can provide a, a briefing as needed just to make sure that those two items are in the sequence stuff we want them to be. Yeah, okay, thank you. Thank you, Corley, very much. Do we have a date that we want to propose for the airport committee? Uh, well, Corley and I had talked today, and we thought that we would come up with a scope of work Okay. Uh, for the council to review with regard to uh, planning for, um, like we need a binding site plan, we need a uh, boundary line adjustment, we've got in inquiries into, a lot of inquiries into hangar lot development right. and how all that looks on the site. We're looking at, you know, through the fence agreements, we're looking at ground leases, and we've had a lot of interest in that, and since we're having kind of a lull period, we thought we might as well go ahead and see if we can't hold a, uh, we'll develop a scope of work for the council because it's, yeah. you know, we need to use Corley's time, and his expertise in that as it relates to FAA standards and, and the like. Exactly. Um, so we thought the better way to do it would be to bring back a scope of work so you can see what we're going to address with the airport committee and give you guys an little bit of insight into what it's going to cost to do that and then we can uh, hopefully use that scope of work to develop a cost estimate and, and then move forward on a meeting with the airport committee and, and then move that along a little bit more quickly. Very good. Very good. So if the council would like to, it would be nice to concur with a direction to prepare a scope of work uh, and address some of the long-range planning issues related to the airport and then hold an airport committee meeting. Yeah, I'm for that. Okay. And when would that scope of work be complete? Or right uh, June 20th. Sounds good. Yeah, for a draft scope is what, what I think makes sense. So we would see this at the next Yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. Very good. And then would that go up to like RFP to um, get a response for completing the scope of work? Well, I, was, I wasn't thinking it was going to cost that much money. So oh, okay. since, since Corley is so intimately aware of our airport and our issues, it would seem consistent that we would just um, maybe add on to his existing contract that we have with him on the, the construction of the airport improvements and just make another addendum, but provide some scope of work so you have some idea of what he's going to be coming out with. Okay. Does that sound like Yeah, a little bit more on that, Larry. Yeah, I think this is very much in line with the, if, if the city and the council wants to move forward with, with our firm decision approach, and this is in line with our master agreement 
and within the time frame of that master agreement to just generate another task order specific to this work. If agreeable. If agreeable to the council. I think so. Okay. Thank you very much. Corley, thank you very much for staying on. <coughs> Of course, it's good, to, good to see everybody, and, and I'll just kind of just make sure I was, was clear on the, the PUD agreement. Um, again, that's a, that's a quote from them in that amount of just under 11800 that that we recommend moving forward with. So whatever you needed from us, Larry, on that front, just let me know. Okay, thank you. We're going to address that under council business. All right, perfect. All right, well, I will sign it off then. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. I think we've covered all of the, the, that initial business will come under council business for the PUD capital outlay portion of this agreement. Let's go now to our department reports, and we'll begin with Chief Jay Hunziker, our Chief of Police. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I just want to touch uh, bases on uh, the first thing is the house fire we had in the 200 block of West Darling. <clears throat> I got a final report from Q Global, who was the fire investigators, and it was listed as accidental. So, with that said, um, to this Thursday, we have the graduation parade, which uh, the police department and fire department is going to be assisting with, which is good. And every year, Legend Casinos has a community contribution fund that you can apply for. Uh, I reached out to them, uh, submitted a form requesting money for laptops, and this year we were awarded uh, money in the sum of $7,500 from Legend Casino. I guess you want to see that. Right. <laughs> So that was good. Every little bit helps. Uh, we put it in for computers, uh, but I am talking with uh, Pat and stuff to see what we can do to uh, get some extra funding to take care of the computers because that's going to be a little bit more than 7,500. But very grateful. Uh, Legend's been absolutely great to the police department over the years. Um, last year we didn't receive anything because they were so limited because of the prior year of COVID restrictions and stuff. They just didn't have. The funding that they had available this year so uh, we will apply every year with them because they just they've really been supportive for the city and the, the police department so, and that's all i have for tonight thank you chief the next uh, item to be reported on the, the golden dale public works department and the uh, director of public works pat munion will be reporting pat. Yeah, um, so the Public Works Department received a new shipment of meters. There are uh, got about a dozen installed and we'll continue installing them until we updated which ones that need to be updated. Um, they uh, reinstalled a couple new water services the, the department did over the last couple of weeks. Um, then we are currently restocking uh, Red Rock uh, for snow removal for next year. Um, we're still trying to keep up on the weed control. The weather is not really cooperating. Um, keeps raining after we spray, so that's not really helping out. Um, still, we're still having some problems with the street lights out here, and I'm still trying to track down a solution to that. I think we're going to end up having to get an electrician involved. Um, I'm sure you guys are aware that the company that they were bought from are no longer in business. Um, we're going to see about, uh, um, we may have to just bypass their technology and go back to uh, <coughs> automatic eye um, system that tells them to come on and off. That we, instead of doing that on every end station, I'm going to see if we can do it on the control panels themselves. So we only have to buy four of those and wire that in four times instead of having to go replace, I don't know how many street lights you have, but I imagine a couple hundred at least. Um, it's just a cheaper option. Uh, 
um, or to see if they can give us a better solution of how to make this function the way it's intended to function. Um, we're down a staff member. A staff member um, uh, resigned, and I, 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 from what I hear, he uh, resigned to go into business for himself. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. No, that's, that's right. So, um, <coughs> we they should be patching potholes in the next couple of weeks. We have to wait uh, till the you know it's been raining a lot. If we throw asphalt in there why the ground's soft or still wet it's just going to pop right back out again so we'll have to that's something we'll be working on as soon as the weather gets uh, well enough to keep it dried out long enough to get it fixed and then um, if you guys noticed we did remove the flowers and they went up um, but uh, and i wasn't here last year so i don't know the difference but what i'm understanding is the flowers were a lot fuller and a lot stronger last year um, when they went up and that windstorm came up and damaged a lot of them and so we removed them and then we've taken them out to the public works yard and the guys have put them in an area where there's no wind trying to nurse those back to health and as soon as they get healthy um, we'll put them back up and then on the water and wastewater um, treatment side uh, we've drained the rouse settling fault um, three yards of settlement rip in the bottom one year's worth, so that's uh, quite a bit of material. Uh, had uh, a three-day water operation exam, Andy did, and uh, he's working on that. Uh, and then the, we received the UV lamps for change out later this summer. Everybody know what the UV lamps are for, so, okay. Um, Radcom installed a uh, new uh, um, SCADA uh, service. They, they will be working with RH2 to get program installed and tested at all sites. And um, finished, um, they finished pumping down the equalizing basin for the summer use. Um, they do that to help with the temperature discharge flow in the summers during the peak season. They keep in compliance. And other than that, just mainly routine plant operation and testing. So, uh, that's pretty much it. Anybody have any questions? Or? Sure. You mentioned uh, a, a recent uh, loss uh, on staff. Mm -hmm. uh, from what I understand, that brings us to three. Three below what we normally would like that's to run right. That's my understanding. Is that correct, Larry? Say it again. Three short of what we would be normally running. Well, we're budgeted for one short. We need I think we three got, short. We're three short for historic, we're three short for historic, from historic levels. But budgeting wise, we're only one short. And we're two short so because of the one that just resigned, right? Or, or am I misunderstanding? Well, I'm not sure what Steve is referring to when you say three, three besides the director? Yes, on mm -hmm. public works. So on public, public works actual. crew, we have how many? How many do we have on <coughs> public works crew? I, I can't answer that off the top of my head without I mean, having we, I can't remember either. We have, with, with uh, Mr. Casey leaving, I think we had six seven. left, is that right? I think we have seven left. Seven, okay. Now, is that just the personnel that works out of the shop? Yes. Yeah, that's just that side of it. We have six okay, plus so. our seasonal. Six plus our seasonal. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, well, I... Do you include Robert and Andy in that? No. Eight plus our seasonal. If you count Robert and Andy at the treatment plant. Oh, well, I'm referring to the personnel that works out of the shop. Okay, so we have specifically. eight. So we have eight that work out there. Well, I think nine has been the Idea. number that we have identified over the years as being necessary to maintain just the basic, just the basics, patching the potholes and that stuff. Let alone, uh, I mean, I, I really uh, applaud the crew for the extra work. 
yes. that they have put in exactly. in the last few months. That's amazing. Yes, they work very hard. They work really hard, and, uh, and specifically the, the, the overlays that they've done. You know, now, now, this is the kind of stuff that everybody in town benefits from. Everybody. And uh, without public works, you don't have a city. Without public works, we might as well all go home. That is the backbone. That is the, the department that keeps the city running. And uh, I, I think it's unacceptable to, to run as short as we've ran. I mean, one person on a crew of eight or nine is a lot. One person on a crew of 20, but you can deal with that. Yeah. But uh, I'd, I'd really like to address that. You mentioned budgeting. I realize that every issue we talk about comes down to money. Every one of them, no one exception. Yeah. So when you start putting price, a price on the welfare of the citizens of your community, where are you going to draw the line? And I would really like to, I'm going to keep emphasizing uh, support for public works and, and a full crew. Uh, if, if you're going to get complaints here at City Hall, it's going to be On that. for the conditions of the streets, of yeah. uh, stuff that public works needs <coughs> care of. Exactly. And they are responsible for the fresh water running out of our taps, for the discharge being treated amongst just some. So I would really, I really can't emphasize enough the importance of full crew in public works. I think so I understand you're advertising now. Already, yes. Yeah, we're advertising under union contract. We have to advertise so many days in house, and then, um, but we have it set up to go out in the paper this week. This week. week. Okay, good. Good. Said my piece. Okay, thank you. First, I have, I, I have a couple questions. Um, one is one of those potholes, the one on <laughs> South Columbus that is waiting on. I'm sure it is. I I, I don't know all the streets. Well, yet. I'll tell you, <laughs> which one? South Columbus <laughs> and Fox <laughs> Street. You can write that down. Okay. Um, port, what is it? It is about a foot and a half by a foot and a half. South Columbus and Port. South it's a perfectly square. Yes. Oh, is this the one you were talking about this morning? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, right. Perfect. Perfect. It is in the middle of the travel lane with no construction signage. Um, and I think it's a liability to the city because I think, uh, it is perfectly cut, so it sounds like it was put there on purpose. Well, they, they did. They cut it out to get yeah. down to a valve. Yeah. Yeah. But they, there again, if it's, they, they can fill it back full of rock right now, but if we put asphalt in it, it'll be out with it wet like that in three yeah. or four days. That's fine. I just don't want to see a, a bill for a vehicle damage. Yeah. I'll do a work order for it for tomorrow. Yeah, put some, put some rock in it. So. Well, rock or orange cones all around. I got a cone. There you go. <laughs> you should bring it to me, too. I, I just, I just think it's big enough that it might cause some damage, and they get the rain and stuff. Yeah, you know, we just need to. No, when you see them, if you just call us and tell us if there's a problem, we'll yeah. go down there and take care of what's in rock right away. Yeah. Well, I, that one looks like it's on purpose. So it's not. Like, it just. Well, yeah, the something. hole was kind of per on purpose, but they, it was to isolate something for. Was it the annex building? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. My other question, I know. Steve talked about budget. Um, last year we discussed the flowers and it's $15,000 to the city. Um, the discussion was we gave uh, Public Works a full-time employee and then we were going to seek someone else to take care of the flowers so that it was not an added job to them. Uh, this last week I saw two employees going around watering instead of the one part-time season that we did. So in an in a environment where they're short-staffed now and we were supposed to cut budget to give them that personnel, now they're still taking care of that and we did not find a contractor to take care of the flowers for cheaper. So the budget 
I'm assuming it is going to cost more. Well, uh, I, I don't know. Does the part-time guy work five days a week or four days a week? He works four days a week, four tens. So was this on Friday? Were you seeing another gentleman water the flowers? Because if it's on a Friday, who's mm -hmm. ever doing the, the no, Friday on a call or whatever they, they call it? Right. It would be the one out watering on Friday. No, there was two guys in the truck together. Well, also I know it's last week they were taking the flowers down, I don't know. Okay, maybe that's what it was. Yeah. But, so, I don't want to hate on the flowers because that's a touchy subject. <laughs> but when you talk about budget and you talk about the workers that are already shorthanded and the work we saw a report from Doug on the amount of hours that they need to complete the task that they have, and the amount of hours that they can actually put in in a year and those numbers did not nearly equal to each other right they have more work than they do so i just want to bring it up i'm not the one to say bring down the flowers again however you cannot say those guys are great they're doing a great work we applaud them and at the same time continue to allow extra work to be put on costs more money and not fund the department, right? So the, the flowers are valuable, but compare that to your employees, right? And so we're discussing that. I, you know, maybe that's what they were. They were taking them down because one was driving and the other one was Well, I know there was on, a day top, that they, you know. before they got them down, they were up there looking at them because they were concerned about the wind yeah. damage. So, I mean, they might have been taking care of them, but again, that's how did it work when the discussions last year were to look for someone else to take care of them, lessen that workload, take that employee, give them a full-time job to help public works department, right? And now we have the added work of taking care of the plants, taking them down. So. Just food for thought for everybody else on the council that, you know, when you say, you know, those guys are great, they're, you know, they're overworked and we should thank them, you create more work for them, you have to think of how to help them. So, just, just saying. I hope the council recognizes that this is a very unusual situation where you had to put up flowers that are very, very yes. expensive, yes. take them down and put them back up to, to be able to salvage them. So well, they're doing an admirable job in that. I mean, there are, it, the flowers are always up to the environment and the weather, right? We, we don't know what's going to happen, normal. but the point being that now they have out of work and they're doing a great job. I mean, it is a very expensive investment on the city, those flowers are. So yeah, trying to nurse them back <coughs> is huge. It's an investment that we made for the year. Right? But again, now they're another person short and we're adding more work. Just to comment on your notion of investment uh, that we're make, that you're make, talking about here, uh, I have to go back to what I brought up about the, what we pay in attorney fees in a month is almost what we're paying for a whole year for something that everybody in the community benefits from and not only that it goes further than that all the people that visit this community mm -hmm. benefit from those flowers right. it's absolutely necessary and it falls right in line with what we're trying to do you know with community development tourism the whole bit. Oh, I, I don't disagree. They, they are great and it makes the city look great, which is what we want. Just think of how to support that, right? That's what the budget committee is all about. Think to either find a contractor to take care of it or get public works more people. In which case, you know, I mean, we can say, oh, let's do this, let's do that, but without thinking how much more work is this creating for the crews and coming up with a plan on how to help them. It's just more work. I'm not saying take down the flowers by no means. I mean, it, it is what it is. It's an investment. 
and yeah, we, we need to keep them going, but we need to think that it's more work on the overtaxed employees already. We have to come up with better, better solutions when we do things. <coughs> and Doug did ask for more people, and he told us the amount of hours. I don't think you were here yet, but he gave us this awesome report on what, how many hours each task that they have, those that are required, those that just function and keep going, and then those that are added, like adding water meters and things like that, and extra stuff just to keep the city going, and then the amount of hours that they can actually work, and the amount of hours that they have in overtime. And they had plenty more work by hundreds of hours than they had work hours, right? So, like you said, they're shorthanded, and we need to think of that. Well, and the work that you're talking about has to be done. I, I don't think anything's been mentioned that would be considered frivolous. Oh, no, no. no, no. Okay, so no. as far as finding out how to deal with that, that's right. what we got to do. Yeah, those are things they we have gotta, to do. Gotta crunch some numbers. Money's there. I, I firmly believe the money's there. And I'm really looking forward to uh, budget workshop this fall. Of course, we'll invite Larry. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> just for old times sake. But I am. I am. You have to invite him before it gets cold. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Might have to buy a plane ticket, huh? Anyway, that's, I'm, that's good. I'm ready, to, I'm ready to work with you. You bet. <clears throat> we don't have a report tonight all from the uh, Golden Hill Fire Department, the fire chief uh, and his leadership are tied up in some other activities. Uh, so we will go on now to uh, the council business. And the first item is the new pump for Main Lift Station, and this is going to be presented by Pat Manin, Director of Public Works. Yeah, so um, they put a continue, added a continuous flow pump in several years ago um, in 2019. I think that was the year, wasn't it? 2019 to pump water continuously out of the booster pump water vault um, to stop that water from, uh, well, it helps keep the vault clean and, you know, but the other main thing is to keep the water flowing so I can't raise up a temperature because come peak summer months we are having trouble meeting discharge temperature at the plant sometimes. So the pump was installed to help with that problem. Um, however, the pump company that installed it, I'm not trying to point a finger or anything, they used a vertical pump. In other words, what they were doing is sucking the water Reducing the flow here, coming in at a sharp 90 into the bottom of a blue, um, which is causes a lot of, um, they're trying to pull water too fast that way, and then they're trying to make a 90, it causes a lot of water computation in the pump, which continues to cause damage. The pump since 2019 till September 2021 has gone down twice because of that problem. Um, so um, we've had been working with RH2 and had them outside, on site, and look at it, and they identified that as the problem. And what we're asking for is to put a horizontal pump system in that should correct the problem. And what we're asking council for is to approve a capital outlay in the amount of $17,335 for improvements to the pump system out there. Other comments or questions to Pat from the council? It's like the $17,335 is just for the price of the pump, but there's also a quote for installation services. Oh. Uh, uh, so, Vinco LLC for the, looks like the installation is $8,979.10. Oh, yeah, sorry. So, did you mean the total of those two? Yeah, so since we just two, got that talk yeah. about public works demand. Yeah, it would be the total of those two, which would be. I don't do math in public, I'll leave that somebody else. 
<laughs> so the seventeen thousand is the total for installation and no, that's, that's just, just the pump. pump. So I think Pat's working up the total oh, the pump yeah, plus okay. installation by another <coughs> provider. And then Twenty-six thousand three fourteen ten. There you go. That's what I got. Sir Mayor, I I so move to uh, approve the capital outlay budget at the amount of twenty-six thousand three fourteen three hundred and fourteen dollars and ten cents for improvements to the main water uh, wastewater pump station. I'll second. I'll second. <laughs> Uh, the equipment that we're talking about here at a wastewater treatment plant, uh, and whether it's uh, fresh water coming out of the hills, Public Works does and can maintain some of that, or do we have to have a contractor come in and maintain and pull maintenance, regular maintenance? Well, this is going to be a whole new installation. They're going to pull the whole installation out of the new installation, and it's... Have you ever been out to that fish pump station? Yes. It, it's down in the basement. Yeah. So, um, it's kind of scary. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when, when it comes to setting a new pump, I, I think it's better off to let the contractor do it. So oh, oh yeah. Level. Yeah, but I mean, after the fact. Oh, yeah. They can, they, can, set up the, 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 they can maintain it to a certain to point. To a certain degree. Yeah. And but uh, after so. that, if it needs to rebuild or the balloon needs to rebuild or replace, it's usually a contractor that's going to do that. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any other comments or questions? We have a motion and a second. <coughs> if not, we cancel. It's been moved and seconded to approve a capital outlay in the amount of $26,314.10 for improvements to the main wastewater treatment pump station. We'll call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Votes unanimous. item on council business uh, is waste the water service connection outside of city limits and Dustin Conroy will present that proposal. Uh, the Bennett's recently purchased a lot near the intersection of um, Pipeline Road and Orchard Heights Road and they requested water service from the city of Goldendale. Um, it's, um, we've actually approved you guys have approved a couple of connections there recently or just up the road. Um, I've written you a letter there with my recommendation to approve it. Um, as part of that um, approval, um, I would recommend the annex gate, annexation covenant to go along with it. Um, uh, but there is a map there of the location and um, plenty of water pressure, um, plenty of water connections. So. I don't see any issue with it. Councilor, do you have questions for Dustin? I just have a question. I know we've mentioned some pump issues with water going down and stuff. Should I mean not not that I'm against this one per se, but should we be doing these right now until we get that pump figured out, or that well figured out? Are you asking me here? I I, I don't know who to refer so to. So you're talking about the work that we're doing with Aspect Consulting? I believe so, with the pump. On the Vassie well? On yeah. the Vassie and the Cornish Station wells. Yeah. Uh, I believe it's something we need to take a look at and, and watch closely. I don't think this request is going to affect that to a great degree at yeah. all. Yeah, I wouldn't think so. I just I just want us to keep that but in I mind. But I think it's that something that we need, we need to keep in mind. Yeah. 
And that was my first thought too, Andy, because just at the last council meeting we had a discussion about the Bassey Well and issues there, and potential drawdown and discussions of potential need for aquifer storage and recovery. Um, and you know, I think I was opposed to the last one that we did. Um, and my concern is just that if we keep doing this, when is it too late, or maybe it's already too late, we're already yeah. overcommitted for needs within the city in the future. So I know we talked about having a rate study done for water and sewer, and maybe part of that should be water supply, and I wonder if we should uh, have a moratorium on outside city connections until we address the city needs, know where we're at with the Bassey Well system, especially as we're going into, despite all the spring rainfall, like a, a third year drought on a 20, 25 year drought on the West Coast, um, and see a lot of springs in remote areas that are going dry. Um, and so that's obviously gonna affect our springs up in the watershed. So I, I guess I'm concerned that we may be making a mistake and continue to keep letting these connections happen. I mean, we, we just wanna be certain that our inside the city limit needs are gonna be met long into the future before we yep. start meeting needs outside the city limits. So yep. maybe not to say no to this, but what's the timeline of their need and can we take a look at that and get some good informed information on the future before we approve this. Well, and I heard the word annex mentioned. Now, are we talking about an annexing out that far? Uh, no. uh, what was you referring to? What so you many times when uh, there's connections outside city limits, <laughs> municipalities require an annex um, covenant be signed, and so they wouldn't contest it if at some point in the future um, there was annexation in that area. Okay, okay. And so it's just part of the agreement to make sure that, um, you know, they realize they're getting water, but there's conditions. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, and in regards to what was this comment about, within our city limits needs and requirements, I noticed there's some movement now on 18th Street. Right. Yes. That is a pretty good sized development. A very good. Within the city limits. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I firmly believe and, and agree here that we should focus more on what is in the city limits. Unless we want to start annexing some of these properties in. I mean, oh, Pat. Just a thought. Um, you know, I. I agree with Dustin. This one is not going to, and Larry, this, this one's not going to make an impact one way or the other. But I, I do agree with what you guys are saying, and there, you know, I would recommend going ahead and proving this, and then do a water moratorium on any services outside city limits until um, the council feels that there is a solution that will allow them to go ahead and allow those situations to occur in the future such as, you know, finding out what's going on with the water system, additional water rights, or whatever else. What size service are we talking about? Just residential service. Yeah. Three-quarter inch? Mm -hmm. How much? You're looking at what, 10 gallons a minute max. Right, but how <coughs> what are the costs that are going to be associated with this, getting that water to that short plant? The Your water line runs right past it, actually, even on the same side of the road, and the they're required to pay that fee, as well as the connection fee, which is higher outside the city limits than it is uh, inside the city limits. Mm -hmm. And so it's all covered in the connection cost. Does public works do the connection, or is that a private contract? No, public works. Yeah. They do the connection, but we bill that cost back to the person. Yeah. So, two questions. Public works does a little bit more. Just throwing that out there. Uh, you know, just keep adding, keep adding to their cabins, okay, they're, they're all there and they're great, right, until they all get tired. Um, just a thought. The other thing is, was there a discussion, I can't remember exactly how long ago we had uh, somebody else come and they had um, divided several lots and if I remember right, they asked for water and the discussion was how much pressure is in that line running through Ponderosa and across the street um, to continue adding more and more and looking at the map uh, provided. <coughs> there are several divisions there and I'm pretty sure it's going to continue so Absolutely. I am going to also support and request not just 
talk about it, but request that uh, monetarium be added to the next council agenda and let's move forward on something and not just let it go. So do we have a motion? Or do we have more questions and comments? I was going to request a public works committee meeting. Oh. And this could be addressed in the public exactly. works committee meeting. I at least get the ball rolling in that direction. Uh, I was going to do that later, but now sounds like a good time to address as far as it, it addressing it. Yep. Um, and, and I agree, I agree. This definitely needs some discussion. I think everybody on the council would agree that uh, you've got to uh, find the limit of absorption here and just keep one at a time, one at a time, one at a time, this kind of creep. And so, uh, and there's a lot of development being talked about north of town a lot. And I mean, there's been other requests mm -hmm. to the city over the years for those services. Uh, so yes, if we can pin a, uh, a date down here yeah. in the very near future for a public works committee meeting, that can be on the agenda. When does the next week work? For me it does. Who's all on the committee? I think I'm, am I on that? It have to be Thursday or Friday for me, Pat. Oh. Okay. Okay, Thursday or Friday. Preferably Thursday. Yeah. yeah. I think I'm on Thursday. I think you are too. Yeah, right. <laughs> I this is not good for one old guy. Yeah, because you're doing the year more too, so that yeah, doesn't put yeah, right. yeah. So, well, as far as this one, are we ready for a motion? And we'll sell it the motion. So as far as this lot specifically, I'll go with the recommendation from staff and move to approve uh, the water service connection outside of the city limits uh, for the benefits as presented. Yeah, second. I'll second it. Very good. If there aren't further comments or questions, it's been moved. Yes. This is one three-quarter inch line. And it, three quarter inch one three quarter inch meter. Okay. Okay, so moved and seconded to the <coughs> water service connection outside city limits for the Bennett's tax ID parcel 0416421230300, subject to the execution of an annex annexation covenant. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Opposed. You're opposed. Don't you mind it staying? Okay. One again. So it's not, not unanimous, but we need to have that committee get us lined up where we can go further after this. But congratulations. I think it's good that we've gotten this done. It was not such an enormous. Past, but at the same time, it's important to keep an eye on everything about what we're doing. The next item under council business is a special connection charge proposal and discussion, and this will be given by uh, Dustin Conroy. Uh, so this proposal is um, for a sewer line extension um, just north of High Street, um, kind of off of Melinda Lane, and um, this had to do with the uh, um, a short plot that was done a few years ago, and now at this time, uh, Larry has asked me to, to review it, do a sewer line design. Um, there's potentially six lots that can be served by the sewer line extension. Um, we've uh, submitted a plan set out for bids um, to get an estimated cost for this project. And so what, what this is, is basically the city would, um, would cover the cost of the installation of the sewer line and then under the uh, Goldendale Municipal Code, um, there's a special um, special connection charge that can be charged 
for these extensions, and through that charge, basically, the city recruits the cost of installing the sewer line. Um, so it helps, basically, it promotes some development, um, allows lots to be served by sewer, and the cost is recuperated at some point in the future when those connections are made. And so this sewer line um, would extend and serve uh, five connections currently is what we're proposing and so you set up a, a benefited parcel map to see how many connections you have and that, that cost is divided by the, the benefited parcels. And so we, um, the cost that we received for the project was the low bid was from m, &M Excavation in the amount of $31,436.87 and then that, that cost would be divided by the five lots. To it. Plus, you guys would also charge your standard uh, sewer connection fee. Council, any comments? Uh, this particular area it has been developed and is on wells, well water, and septics, correct? Uh, portions of High Street are on septic. Well, this uh, isn't High Street. This it's is, just north of High Street. Off of High Street. Yep, it's about, uh, it's one lot north of High Street. I believe it is served by City Water, though. It's inside the, the service area for the City of Golden. I know it is, but when it was developed, it was from Wells and Septic. No Wells? I'm not sure to what property you go. This property is off of Melinda Lane and Kenny Court. Yeah. Do you know where we're talking about? As you go north from there one block, that whole area has been subdivided and it's all served by city water and most of it is served by city sewer. Okay. These five lots are not served by city sewer, but they are already served by city water. Okay. So <coughs> if you want to, all of these lots are, with the exception of one, all of these lots are served with city are vacant, with the exception of one lot that has a house on it that will convert to the sewer line when there are septic bales. When there are septic bales. It's like a it's it's, it's like a latecomers agreement, mm -hmm. but the city is the developer. All the people that are benefited by these five parcels are benefited by that sewer line. So it's a special connection charge that's assigned to those people. So for, for these people to put a house on there, then they'd have to pay the, the water connection fee, the water installation fee, the sewer connection fee, and the special sewer connection fee. So then essentially when they look at buying the lot, they can say it has water and sewer available. available. To build a house on top of it would be so much easier. Correct. So it's another way of providing an incentive to help people get take the next step to build on the property. How big are those lots? Uh, they're. Do you remember? Probably about a half an acre. There's how many of them? Five. Oh, another point. They vary in size, but they're about 0.3 acres. So about 15,000 square feet, or well, a little bit less than that. I think another clarification is that all the streets on the north side of High Street are septic at this time. On the north side of High Street, that right. is correct. And there's been issues with some of those where they had to have their septic rebuilt, couldn't connect because of the, the rocks, bedrock on High Street and to the correct. south. And so this would set up starting the process to connect those. What would be, I mean, obviously price, but connecting or adding that now in one project? Say that again. You're talking about like on High Street? Yeah, to those lots on north, on the north side that don't have. <coughs> what would be the difference to adding be, it on? I think that's going to be a lot bigger project because I can't repave up there because of all the issues with the tree roots and rocks, correct? 
Well, it gets a little more difficult than that, too, because um, when you set this up, you have to define the benefited parcels. And um, in, in order to connect additional houses or extend that further to the east, um, the next lot to the east is actually a large parcel. So it's just one benefited parcel. Um, and so there's not much additional benefit currently to extend it. Um, the, the cost goes up but with only one additional benefited parcel, or maybe two. So it would be so, until so. that parcel or the other houses on the north side of High Street, their septic fails, and then they really need. Yes. You can't count them in until that happens. Yes. And so this would also be um, deep enough so that they could install it in the future. They could extend this line. Um, it's designed currently with that intent is that this can serve additional property in the future. But probably at this time, it, I, I just wonder, you know, going bit by bit, how much, what, what's the difference instead of going in little pieces, making it available for future growth? And the cost of, you know, bringing all the equipment down and the cost of inflation in five more years. So, one is I own a couple of these parcels, mm -hmm. and there's three people that want to build on three other parcels here. And the owners are all paying for this cost. So this cost is going to be borne by the landowners. Um, and, and the reason that it's coming forward now is because they want to build these on these lots now. Okay. And so, to, so the plants are there already. Right. So the, the, the landowners pay for the cost of the infrastructure, and then it's turned over to city ownership after construction. Okay. Okay. Just a question. And then maybe somewhere down the line we can pave that street. <laughs> <laughs> Not that it doesn't need it. Make sure you do all the digging for speed bumps. <laughs> well, if everybody kind of understands what we're doing, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the next step which we need, for which we need authorization is to develop an ordinance that actually establishes the benefit of parcels and how those, how they work is to be paid and applied to each individual person as they come on to the system. So do you need a motion from us on this one to move forward or do you need from I need, I need direction from you to prepare an ordinance. Uh, I guess in a form of the motion or just? Sure. Okay. Why not? I mean, okay, so I'll, I'll move. Give some direction. Yeah. <laughs> I move to give Larry some direction. It's <laughs> <laughs> a little late for that. It's pretty late that. that probably won't go through. <laughs> right, okay. Well, we do a lot of things in the city that don't go through, but okay, so I, I, I guess I move forward to give staff the direction to uh, work on the ordinance needed and the proper paperwork and recommendations to move forward on the construction or extension of the uh, utility services as presented. Sir? Steve seconded. Oh, you did. Sorry, I did. <coughs> it's been moved and seconded to give uh, city direction uh, in resolving this issue of uh, connection charges for sewer and other residential development. Any further questions, or is that all that we need in that statement? Uh, well, I just know, I just turned the page. What is, what does this refer to? This refers to the special connection that we're talking about. Charge. And over here it talks about, over here it talks about how that's supposed to be set up. Okay. It says you got to have an ordinance that addresses all these items. So this ordinance that you're going to prepare will consist of a lot of Yes, this way. a lot of warehouses and a lot of this is how it will be done and this is who's charged and how much okay. charged and all that. Okay. 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 easy on the warehouses. I just want to make sure <laughs> Sandy <laughs> got all the notes and... Sandy doesn't have to struggle. She's got to keep up. Okay. She's got to give us direction. <laughs> so the, the proposal has been stated. We have a motion and a second. We'll call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 And one abstention. Thank you. We go now 
to the new items on the amended agenda. Oh, and one other thing before we go to that next item. Yeah. Uh, when we were planning out the, the meeting and all, Larry mentioned that you might have other things you wanted to bring up for the council. Sure, so just a quick update on uh, Byer Street. Um, we have our pre-construction meeting next uh, Wednesday with the contractor. He intends to start the following week. I think that's June, is that 20? Byer yeah. Street. Uh, on Byer Street, yes. And um, so that one will start that week. Um, the Simcoe sewer crossing project, that's been completed and that patch has been completed. And then also the um, overlay has been completed on the entrance into Goldendale there by McDonald's. Yes. Um, we're still waiting on some paint on that, um, but that'll come as they close up. And then, as mentioned earlier, the, the subdivision out on off of South Columbus has also started. So, um, lots going on actually. Yes. Yes. The thing is, there's going to be more housing and growing. It's something the council's working hard to make sure it happens. Thank you very much. Yes, you back here. Thank you. The next item is G four. This is on there. what was amended and added to the uh, amend, uh, to the uh, agenda, and this is to install new a new 200 amp electrical service uh, by the Clickitat PUD. You have a packet submitted. Uh, we need to have comments, questions, and you can see uh, your motion. Time we can Based on the previous discussion earlier this meeting, right. uh, I moved to approve a capital outlay for installation of a 200 amp underground single phase service payable to the Clifton County PUD in the amount of $13,754.34. Second. Moved and seconded. Are there other comments or questions before we vote? Just uh, as far as the expenditure, this is coming out of city coffers, correct? This is coming out of city coffers and to be reimbursed by the capital grant of the state of Washington. Thank you. You're welcome. It's good. <laughs> you have a motion in a second, right? I think so. Yeah. After a while, you lose track of these things. It's been moved and seconded to approve a capital outlay for installation of a 200 amp underground single phase service. Payable, payable to the Clearhead County PUD in the amount of $13,754.34. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? item is uh, item I, the ordinances, and on this one it's uh, <coughs> presented by Pat Munion and it's the Air Ambulance Service as a benefit. Pat? Um, so <clears throat> we've uh, prepared an order for your review as uh, my understanding that the City Council had prior to discussion about um, providing staff and elected officials with uh, and air ambulance services. So the city attorney has looked at the the ordinance. Uh, Larry and I have looked at the ordinance and made some minor changes to it. Um, I'm hoping you guys have read it, and we're asking you to approve the ordinance for its first reading. So moved. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve the ordinance for its first reading on air ambulance service. Any further questions or comments? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. It's unanimous. The next item is the report of officers and the city administrator, and we'll begin with Larry Bellamy. Uh, just a couple of items to note here. Uh, next Monday night, uh, we have another meeting with the Park Planning Committee to talk about the Park Plan. That'll start at 6 p.m. 
next Monday night. So those of you that are on that special committee, um, make note of that. That's the 13th. Right? The 13th. And then on the 15th, which would be a Wednesday, the Reds um, process is going to kind of finalize itself by having a special presentation on how we've been doing since it was initially approved in October of last year. So we've been kind of working on all of the projects that were addressed in that Reds presentation and we're going to give the community an update on those items. And that Red's final presentation is going to be held at the observatory uh, starting at 11 o'clock and going through lunch to 1.30. And that's on Wednesday, 6th, uh, the 15th day of June. So there's just a couple of meetings of note that I wanted to bring to your attention. 6 p.m.? 6 p.m. is the Monday the 13th. On Wednesday the 15th, it's at 11 a.m. And lunch, lunch will be provided. I'll be there. Sorry. Oh, then I bring that back now, lunch? I've got to write that down now. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Thanks, Larry. Food always works. Yeah, it helps. <laughs> Uh, we'll hear now from our council members, but we'll begin with Andy Hallmer, Mayor Pro Tem. So I got a couple things. Uh, the fire chief uh, asked me to bring up that the burn ban is in place here in Goldendale, just right. to remind everyone not to be burning. Um, next, it's kind of a numerous issues. I've had several citizens come to me about uh, cleaning up Goldendale and issues in Goldendale. Uh, first one is on 21st Street and Jackson Street, out in that neck of the woods. On 21st Street and then along Columbus, it seems to like no one's taking care of the grass outside of their fence line. That's been an issue that someone's brought up to me and I've noticed it also. Uh, someone brought up the cars that are parked around the Catholic Church, that are not the Catholic Church obviously, that have flat tires and are filled with, appears to be garbage. Um, and then the, the continuous uh, overgrown, overgrown yards and junk in front of houses, and I've had a couple of comments that this town is looking dumpy by several people. So I think that's something that we need to start working on and start enforcing our ordinances and get out there and maybe not harass everyone per se or give warnings to say, hey, we need to, you know, maybe a reminder to everyone. But um, it's not a good look when people start calling Goldendale dumpy. I think it's something that needs to start getting taken care of. Well, what about the different areas, like uh, industrial areas and residential areas? Well, I, I've had it from numerous people all around town, so it's it's yeah, kind of well, a. What what about the cop shop? You know, that's owned by the sheriff, and uh, they they don't trim their grass up around there. Yeah. You know that kind of stuff. I mean, so how can you enforce that on the residential people if the county doesn't even go ahead? Well, we, we need to wait till we get the public comment. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's all right. But uh, it's just a matter of how we look through this. No, I just, like I said, I just, I think we need to, you know, I think part of it's a lot of people, I don't know where it's been lost, but pride in home ownership and pride in their town. And I, it's just sad to hear the negative comments about how Goldendale looks. So I just think we need to start doing something about it. Well, I think that uh, Michelle, Ma well, Roni has contacted us about a citywide cleanup coming in, I think it's later in July. I, I've got it on my computer, I don't know the date exactly. But I think we haven't had that normal, traditional city cleanup. And these things can be emphasized and brought attention to for the owners so they know. I think also is that there's a way, you know, to if you have a neighbor that you know doesn't have a lawnmower or yeah. they're elderly or something like that, you know, help them mow their lawn. I mean, how easy is that to do? You know, it, just being a good neighbor and helping each other out <coughs> could be a simple fix to some of it. Exactly. So. Excuse me. In, in regards to that, uh, I was speaking with Commissioner Christopher, and apparently there was a cleanup day last Friday. Saturday. Saturday. Okay, Saturday. Now that's, 
in addition to the later one you're talking about, the traditional one? Or? Well, I'm not sure. Maybe they've already done it. We didn't. I know I've had correspondence with that department, uh, but I'm not so sure. Uh, well, it's an excellent idea. Uh, you know, a community wide cleanup, yeah. the effort, you know, we volunteer. The hard part is finding volunteers to do it, who need trucks to do it, and all that. And, and again, in respect and regard to what Ann is talking about here, one of, if not the biggest problem here, is we're talking about rental properties, yeah. home ownership, private, private. And it's alive and well for the most part. <coughs> Fortunately, you, I'd like to see an update on it. And I'll bring it to the council one of these evenings, if I can remember, uh, an update, or, or the data that breaks down how many residents in this town are rental. We're like 50%. It's 50%. Half the town. And of that 50%, probably <coughs> half of those are owned by developers that don't even reside in the state of Washington. And so they don't care. And so the weight does lie with us right here, with the city, with our ordinances. We've got the ordinances. We've just got to enforce them. And, and, and you're going to irritate somebody. You know, I've got the right. That ain't joke. Come collecting that stuff. You know? One person's junk is another one's treasure. But there is a line to draw here. There is. I mean, we all know common sense. And uh, junk is junk. Cars with flat tires full of garbage, that's unacceptable. So that, it does. It comes, the buck stops here. It does. That's true. And we, we've got to uh, get serious about it. Well, one thing, you know, with the amount of extra rainfall that we've had, the grass, everyone's grass is growing, and also the wild rye, that is really yes. growing, yes. and that is really a very potential fire danger later on in the summer. Very much. Weed eaters. That's what weed eaters are for. Yeah. I mean, the wild rye will grow on an inch of soil. I mean, it'll grow anywhere. Typically to address this by the 4th of July. Yeah. 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 I think we'll be all right. Thank you, Andy. Those are important points. Yes. And let's make sure as a council that we keep up with this particular point so we can do the extra effort that's going to be needed. I think we can all work on that together. We'll go now to Alberto Montanetos. Okay. Uh, well, I just wanted to add on the whole cleanup that our ordinance do not allow for any exceptions. So, as it was mentioned, you know, business, industrial, or other government agencies within the city are not accept, exempted from cleanup. So, that addresses that issue, right? Um, the other question I have, and is more for um, Chief Hansaker and. Um, with the whole shootings across the country in the schools and things like that just brings an issue. And we can <clears throat> only do so much within our city government uh, because we're obviously not going to fix everybody's issues. Um, but I just want to make sure, and maybe we can get some information from uh, Chief Hunsaker and uh, Fire Chief on um, how prepared we are for any major incident like that or tragedy and um, what resources they have or are needed um, so that you know we they have the support from us uh, to be able to take care of things when they happen. I know in the past pre-COVID there was uh, law enforcement fire EMS training happening um, whole scenarios and things like that um, and then everything kind of stopped with COVID. Um, so I just want to make sure that you, public safety has the resources needed um, so that at least for our part and our preparedness we can move forward and hopefully it never happens but when it happens we, we're taken care of. Uh, to address some of those issues, what the, the Golden Dell Police Department is planning as soon as the school is out, right, we will conduct active shooter training, which we've done in the past, 
We do have the SIM munitions for it. Uh, in light of all the shootings that have gone on recently, uh, myself and uh, Pat had a meeting uh, at the request of the school superintendent. Uh, they are exercising the idea of uh, going in with the city and reaching out to a grant program to get an SRO into the school, which is a school resource officer. Uh, not a quick fix, but it's a step in the right connect, uh, direction. Um, so we are working on that. Uh, we are planning to have uh, put together a meeting. I don't have the time or date yet set. Uh, but uh, reached out to Jeff King, and, you know, and I'm sure he'll consult with you too, to have a meeting with all department heads in the school and talk about any further issues. We did discuss, Pat and I, uh, with the school about what we can do right now versus uh, trying to prevent something. And a lot of it is just the, the awareness or control the access and uh, ingress and egress to the school during school hours, but it's problematic. Um, the more you have control of who's coming in, right, uh, the more <coughs> chance you know you can stop or see a problem come in and get on the horn. So we are working with the schools. We do, uh, our active shooter uh, training has not uh, stopped or changed any. Um, if that, uh, God forbid, that call comes into our uh, 911 center uh, for the Goldendale area, you're going to have officers responding immediately. That is the, one of the biggest benefits the city has. The optimum number is three officers on scene go in right away, right? And that's what we'll do. We're there to stop the threat. We're not going to wait. We're going to go in, okay? So I assure you of that, that the officers will go in, right? What happens inside, that's a whole different scenario. And I can't tell you what they're going to do once they're inside because every situation is different. The nice thing about it is, and I, uh, this is not a secret, all the schools have cameras, right? I don't know if anybody knows, but when uh, something happens at the schools, dispatch does have the capability to bring those cameras right up and tell us what they see inside. So instead of going in and just hearing, going to where the shots are at, if their shots are going at that time, we're, we're running and we're going for it, right? If we don't hear anything, dispatch is going to be in the air saying, okay, we see this or we see this or we don't see this, right? Or we've got this activity this way. So they can direct us direct to it if they see it. So we do have that in mind. So training and just... Uh, my recommendation to the school again is more control about who's coming and going from that school during school hours, but that can be problematic in ones when you got students that have to leave the school to go do something else in another school, and so uh, it's it's in the works. It's in the works. Yeah, like I said, it, I mean, there's a lot, and yeah, I'm, I'm involved in, in a lot of it, but I I think this body needs to know, and I think we need to support because it does come down to budget like we talked about. <coughs> it's an investment in our future, mm -hmm. right? It, every child is an investment in our future. And to come back to, God forbid, a tragedy happening and say, we didn't have the tools, right. or we didn't have enough training because the budget didn't allow for overtime. I think this is one thing that we need to make a conscious decision that uh, we're going to support and not just by words, by, by action, so I'm interested in, after those meetings, anything that is needed that we don't have, or you know, more training hours, or anything like that, so that we are aware of that. Um, any shortfalls, I know you guys will make up for anything that we don't have, but something else mm -hmm. that we have, but um, I think it would be fair for us to know we need this for the future, or you know, this is what we need to be looking at or invest now. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we're uh, as far as what we need now is we're pretty well equipped. Um, the big thing out of Texas is uh, they talk about shields, right? These shields will give you more protection. Extremely heavy. I think adrenaline would compensate for that weight, uh, but they're they're very expensive. But that'd be something that would probably be. One of my goals to have every car outfitted with, right?
right, instead of just one. We have one and they're normally used for search warrants, right. Uh, but all officers have pass keys that are issued to them by the school, so we can't get locked out. We have the keys secured with us, each officer, so they can get into any building and any door in a school in this town. And that would only be fair if we're expecting them to be running into danger to have the protection they need. Right. right. It's, it's, I mean, it's a chaotic scene. I mean, you know, even the training that we do and the actors we have and fill the hallways with smoke, right? And it's a little paint pellet. They smart like hell when you get hit with them, but they're not going to kill you or break skin. Well, how do I say break skin? The plan. So, but, uh, Realistic training as much as possible is our continuing goal, continuing goal for active shooter situations. And we've done schools, courthouse, the windmill building. Um, uh, we've done Centerville High School or Centerville School too. So it's it's quite a thing. And when we do have these trainings, we will put it out to the council uh, and see if you want to come and watch. We're not responsible if you get a ricochet or paintball, <laughs> but no, uh, it, it, it's it's good training. I'm not saying it's fun training, but we do. It's very uh, interactive, right? very interactive, and it's as real as we can make it. And the one thing that we've done in the past is we had EMS and ambulance for emergency extraction. Once we've got a, a clear enough uh, zone to get emergency personnel in there to start tending to the wounded and getting them out and having a, a triage set up somewhere nearby. Because all they're going to do is get in there, uh, dress the wounds as best as they can, put them on a drag cloth and get them out. And it's just, as we go, we'll just stair step through. You know, so that's, we've done that before. And I plan to put uh, a big event together for one big scene. Right now, individual with law enforcement going into training, that's what we're targeting there, too. So, okay. Thank you. If I could add something, Chief. One of the first things that I was, I guess, exposed to when I became mayor was I was invited to one of the active shooter exercises. And the smoke came, the bullets started flying, and I decided I'd wait outside and see how it came out. It was really real. It was amazing how effective that was and how well our officers are trained. It, I decided I probably all didn't want to be in the way of all that. So, thank you. I'll, I'll add one job. thing too. As good as the system that dispatch has, right, when we were doing our exercise, I, I had, they were, do, they were so well spot on target with everything they were doing. I had to say, oh, call dispatch, say, okay, your camera system just went down because our office, the bad guy's not having the chance to move around and stuff, which is good, but we wanted the officers to be able to engage, search and engage that training because they're always not going to have the option of them knowing where the bad guy is. But that's how good it was, is they were yeah. looking at all the cameras, all right, you got your shooter sitting down here at the northwest corner near the gym, right? Or he's now at the northeast corner of the cafeteria by the gym. And so it works very well, and it's a benefit. I just shut the camera system down, no more reports, so the officers had to do more of a search and find. <coughs> you know, because what happens if that camera system does go down? Exactly. Yeah. Right. So, anyways. Good training. Anything else? No, that's it. Thank you. Mylon Wally. Well, thank you, Mayor. I just want to maybe a little more report on the airport. Uh, Larry, we, we did apply for a grant, didn't we, through the uh, federal grant, uh, earmark grants? Do yes. We, yeah, okay, yeah. For extension and widening of the Right, exactly. And then also then we're working on, uh, with uh, Representative Gina Mossberger's uh, office, they were supposed to send us the forms to fill out for capital projects. I guess we're still waiting for them? Yes. Okay, okay. I just want to uh, make that comment, additional comments. Also, uh, the Goldendale Chamber is putting on this summer the Summer Solicited, if I pronounce that right. It's a celebration at the Goldendale Observatory on June uh, 21st. That's Tuesday, June 24th, 
1st from 6.30 to 9 p.m. And this is going to be uh, what it would be, uh, they'll be talking about the uh, Solicis Art Contest and uh, people be able to catch a ride on the bus down at the uh, Golden Hill High School. Uh, the reason of the bus is because there's not enough room for everybody to be parking up there, so they provide the bus. And uh, then uh, the speakers would be Troy Carpenter, and then also then uh, Jim White, friends of the Gorge Area Parks will also be there. And so this, this is really going to be, uh, the Chamber's going to be obviously be advertising this more details, but this kind of gives a heads up that this event is coming on, and I think it's going to be a pretty exciting event. Uh, Anytime you get to go to the observatory, I think it's an exciting event. But then, anyway, just kind of a heads up on that. And so, I, I guess that's all I really all I have uh, tonight. Thank, Thank you. Very much. Appreciate you covering that. Elliot? Hey. Hi, hey, thanks, Mayor. I just had a couple things. You know, at the last uh, council meeting, Steve was talking about the Zoom. All right, and I, I kind of wanted to put in my two cents on it. It seems like it's been working a lot better lately, uh, both for what we can hear and what the people on the other end can hear. I know before there was a lot of problems with them being able to hear, but that microphone's taking care of that from what I understand. I can hear it pretty good most of the time now, but I just wanted to talk about how important that Zoom is for us nowadays, and it seems like it's not something that's going away, so I think it's a good investment, you know, like Steve was talking about at the last meeting, to do, keep doing whatever we can to make it better for us, because we get so much information on the Zoom now, um, you know, a lawyers talking to us and trying to communicate with us. Sometimes I'm... Uh, scoop way over here on Lauren so I can see the person because I like to I like to see a person's face while they're talking so when Corley was on there talking I was really trying to watch it makes you be able to hear and understand a person better if you can see their face so I don't know maybe on that wall for us over here on this side sometimes when there's I can't see it too much but anyway, I'm just saying that, uh, man, nowadays that Zoom is so important for us to get information that way. We make really super important decisions based on information we get from people talking on that. So it, it's, uh, it's been a lot better lately, I think, but like Steve was saying, if there's any one of us that doesn't get the information we're supposed to be getting from that because we have a hard time hearing it or understanding it, well, that's a problem that uh, we have to keep on all the time I think. Anyways, and uh, hey I'm going to keep talking about uh, community days coming up. Um, you know have we got any, um, who's going to run the parade? Yes. Oh okay. Pat Shem is going to run the parade. Okay good. Whew. Okay. <laughs> Surprise. Well, that last yeah. thing came out. Don't know where the police department will lead you. Yeah. Okay, good. And, uh, you know, uh, the time capsule event, you know, I've been talking about that constantly. Um, keep thinking about stuff that we want to put in that time capsule. If anybody here has any ideas, for good things to put in the time capsule. I gave everybody one of those uh, collection letters last time, and I have more of them if you don't want another one, but anybody has any good ideas for, you know, worthwhile things to put in that time capsule? Uh, the drop-off for that's at the library, uh, June 25th, it has to be in by. So, uh, you know, spread the word out there. Uh, we got a big time capsule. It's in the other room if anybody wants to look at it. And, uh, we got lots of room for some really cool stuff to put in that, so that's all I had. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you very Dave, much. we also have an update yes. uh, pad on the on the sound systems. Oh, oh, so, great. No, we heard what you guys were talking about last time. We have a, mm -hmm. we've talked to Radcom. They're working on coming up with a solution and um, putting a proposal together how to do that. We're kind of thinking more of a 
fold-up TV. They can oh. fold down when you're talking. Uh huh. And then uh, where they there's a camera both ways where they can actually see you because I don't know if they can see you when they're on. They can see our camera. They can see. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, so what our camera sees is what they see. Yeah. But uh, maybe a fold down, and I do want to talk to her as well to see if there's anything we could do that would help her out as well. You. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, because that's a, another Nancy great service that we have is Nancy putting that on the oh, internet for everybody to watch. Uh, yeah. There's been a few times where I didn't hear the person talking on the Zoom very well. So I watched it the next day when Nancy put it on, just so I could catch everything that I missed. But uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, so <coughs> I'm not sure if it's Zoom or a different service that has caption available. So whether you're here or somewhere else, it will add caption to that. I don't know. Um, that might be an added service, you know, everything costs money, but it might help with that as well. Whether if you don't hear it clearly because of whatever the caption, you know, you can read along at least part of it. So. Okay, very next. One, one silly question How big <coughs> is this new time capsule going to be? I'll show it to you. Oh, it's in the other room okay. over there. Okay. <laughs> For the whole body. It's big. <laughs> I, might be able to, I might be able to stuff you in there. It wouldn't hold me. <laughs> 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 but many thanks to Republic Services constructed that time capsule for us and uh, donated it to us. Travis Gray built it and uh, they donated all the materials and time it took to make that. So uh, many thanks to Republic Services and uh, for doing that. Anything else? No, no, thank okay. you. Steve? Uh, I'm going to go back to when did we decide on the Public Works Committee meeting? I believe it was Thursday. Next Thursday. He said Thursday or Friday. Friday. Thursday, Thursday or Friday, yeah, because uh, 16. Lauren, uh, you said, he said Thursday probably worked better for him. He did? Okay. So what day now, Thursday? This Thursday or next Thursday? The next 16th. Thursday, okay. Sixteenth. Sixteenth, okay. Okay. At what time? Oh yeah. What time does it work for you guys? Uh, I'm gonna work four a.m. So four a.m. Five four a.m. Four p.m. Four p.m. What are we doing? Four p.m. That's my bedtime. Uh, <laughs> yeah, not that long. So. Uh, 4 p.m. 4 p.m.? Yeah. On Thursday the 16th. Okay. Make, okay. It a, make it a good long meeting, too. Yeah. I'm not on that committee. <laughs> <laughs> Steve's good at that. So we'll <laughs> I'll figure out some way to drag him in. <laughs> yeah. Get him involved. Is that provided? Or? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, there's going to be pie there, dude. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, I wanted to make, oh, make mention of uh, what I see as a very unique opportunity that the City Council that we have and the City of Goldendale has at this particular time, and that is in regards to our County Commissioner. I can't remember when, I've lived here a lot of years, when we have had a Commissioner that has show the sincerity and the devotion and put, put in the time and the concern for our district and specifically Golden Dam. Yeah, consistently. And uh, I, like I said, I, it's a great opportunity that, that I really believe we need to seize upon that and work. I mean, he, he's opened up the door for us to work with the county, which has been not existent over the years. I mean, a little bit, a little bit, but not like it is now. And uh, I just I just want to make a comment on that. And he's on the, well, I would call it the Parks Committee right. now, but that is pretty much community <coughs> development. And uh, he's, uh, he's not afraid to think outside the box. Right. 
you know, which is, is what we need, uh, contrary to the write-up in the paper, uh, there's a little put, put back by our editor-in-chief's opinion of it, but Dan Christopher is sincere. Yeah. He is sincere, and again, uh, it's, a, it's a unique opportunity that we as council and the city have in front of us here. Uh, because he brings, he brings a lot of uh, tools. He does. And my and, uh, anyway, well, I just wanted to uh, to uh, expound on that. Uh, and relative to what Andy brought up, uh, I was going to ask: Has there been any movement? Because I've made the request more than once about the ordinance regarding. RV placement and usage within the city limits. This is in addition to the junk we're talking about, and they're not all coming together. Uh, just again, I can't, can't address enough on the fact that we've really got to address this. I'm not on that committee, but I'll work with you. I mean, I think we're all going to work together on this. Uh, committees are, are very useful. I won't deny that, but uh, it takes the entire council to address some of these issues. And uh, we're going to have to, we can't keep sweeping it under the rug. Can't keep sweeping it under the rug. And we'll have to work, we'll be working directly with public works and law enforcement with this. Uh, I mean, it's, it's an overall effort here that we're going to have to, to uh, tackle. Anyway, is there a public uh, works uh, ordinance committee meeting schedule? Has there been one? I'm just curious. Uh, we start. We have it. It's got to start somewhere, and that, that's a good place as any is with the committees that we have. We got a whole bunch of committees, right. and that's what their purpose is. And so, let's let's start with that. Uh, I mean, I've even made the comment to Larry before as far as public works. I think we got to meet once a week. So once a month. I mean, because uh, like was expressed a little bit earlier here, there's a lot happening. Mm -hmm. Tremendous amount. A lot coming at us here. And uh, if we're not proactive in regards to this stuff, it's going to steamroll us. Exactly. I mean, we've got to somewhere to hold bigger cells out of anyways. I think that is inherent to government, <laughs> if you want to put it that way. But uh, I would really appreciate some, some response or some movement on that. And again, if I can help in any way, I, again, I'll, I'll try to scare up uh, some of that data, some of that whole information to show you those numbers. Uh, there it is. And, and that's relative, too. It is. Uh, so, I mean, I do my neighbor's yard. I do more than my yard just because of that. And I do the other side of the fence. Uh, but, and in regards to what uh, was mentioned too about government entities, police department, city, and all that, we aren't uh, excluded. And it's always good to lead by example. Get out there, you know, all of our city properties. Uh, I know spraying has been <laughs> tempered here because of the weather, but what we've got now is a situation where that stuff is this high, you spray it and kill it, it's going to be that high and dead. Yeah, I, I don't know. Does the city have a flail mower or a fresh hog? Or... I believe so. Get up with the gas. Start digging, digging around out there in the shed. Whatever. If not, if not, something to look into uh, as far as equipment. Uh, it's not going to cost as much as a street sweeper. Uh, and uh, it's going to address a real critical situation. Well, and just to throw it out there, um, training fire starts from the burn. What's that? Training fires are exempt from the burn. Okay. All right. Anyway, thank you. Everybody. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Good. Thank you. Uh, on the mayor's remarks, 
I've got a couple of things that are very, very good news for Oakdale. The first one is from the Department of Ecology. Not many really positive things come out of ecology, but this is. And it has to do with our wastewater treatment plant, which received for the second time an outstanding performance award. And there's a beautiful letter from the uh, Department of Ecology that is talking about that uh, he congratulates the city of Goldendale for the Goldendale Wastewater Treatment Plant. It's receiving the, the performance award for the, out of 300 communities in the, in the uh, state. Ours is one of 124 that received the outstanding performance uh, of wastewater treatment uh, plant operations in 2021. That's two times in a row. That's quite an accomplishment. It's a very complicated job and a very tough one. And they do a great job. Um, it, uh, it brings out a couple of points that, because uh, this is what we've talked about so many times with our public works crew. It takes diligent operation, operators and a strong management team working effectively together to achieve a high level of performance. 2021 started as the radius year on record followed by extreme snowfall. It continued with a record-setting heat wave, tornado warnings, and ended up with flooding and more snowfall, turning wastewater into water clean enough to discharge to waterways, takes efficient, takes efficient process control and skilled teamwork, and good, good judgment. The ecology appreciates the extraordinary level of effort your plant operators, the Goldendale Wastewater Treatment Plant operators, uh, have demonstrated throughout 2021. That's an outstanding thing. Now, there'll be a, a more formal presentation by the Department of Ecology in two or three weeks. They just send this out uh, to help us to know what's coming, and it's a very positive thing. Uh, I think in the last uh, year, year and a half, we've gotten some very good cooperation from the Department of Ecology, and that's very policy for any city, any city at all, in particular a small rural city. And so this, I've already talked to our wastewater treatment operators, how unique this is, they're excited about it as well. And they deserve it. And the second item concerns our Goldendale Energy Storage Project. That's the big uh, pump storage project. And that, I'm not going to give you the whole details, but also with the Department of Ecology there, providing a comment time now to, to comment on this project. There will be an environmental impact study. It's already prepared. It will be out. The draft up will be out. We'll see all these details, I believe, in the newspaper. If not, I'll have it uh, on our interview tomorrow uh, on the radio. But uh, Ecology is accepting comments on this project. It's a huge project. It's when you get a project recommended by Ecology, you're a long way down the road, a long way down the road. There's so many things that can still uh, frustrate this, but right now, uh, our pump storage project, which means thousands upon thousands of workers, and then enormous revenues for our county and our cities. It, it'll be a very positive thing, but those are the two. I was just tickled to death. This is the best money I think I've ever seen. <laughs> and it's not me, it's these workers, it's our staff. Yeah. And uh, they really deserve recognition, not only our public works people, our police department, our fire department, they are knocked out, as well as our administrative people here in this office that work so hard to keep everything going. So those, those are just the things that I feel we need to realize what we have in this community. Uh, it, like you say, and uh, it's not a criticism at all, we, we do have times so when we don't look too hot. People don't clear up yards or, or a number of things like that. I think I've struggled with that ever since I moved here as far as trying to do something about it in this chamber or in the county or now in the city. Uh, and it's an ongoing everyday fight to get some of these things done. And very often people get old and they can't do the things they used to do. I know for my wife and I it's a four or five day challenge to get the yard done and weeds and bushes trimmed and all that. Uh, it's a lot, but it's worth doing. Absolutely worth doing. Um, with that, the next item is public comment. Is anyone here? Come up, please. Sorry, I'm moving a little slower. I got stuck there. 
First, I would like to just take this opportunity to... Give your name and address. My name is Sunday Sutton. I am the coalition coordinator for the CPAC Coalition, Coalition Preventing Abuse in Klickitat County. And my office address is 104 South Grant. Um, as I was saying, I'd just like to take the opportunity to thank each and every one of you for your diligence and your focus on our community. Um, I really appreciated sitting here and listening. I've been here a couple times to your meetings and um, I'm always impressed when I leave. Um, CPAC is the longest running prevention coalition in Klickitat County. Uh, we have worked to help develop and sustain other coalitions uh, within our county. Our mission is to work within the community to reduce abuse and promote healthy choices by developing an environment of wellness through education, positive opportunities, and advocacy. We are a 501c3 and a Community Prevention and Wellness Initiative grant recipient uh, that focuses solely in the Goldendale area. Uh, Washington Gorge Action Program is a fiscal sponsor for that grant. The purpose of the CPWI grant is implementing evidence-based substance use disorder prevention strategies from the community level. Uh, to help reduce local risk factors for youth and adults and promote mental health in our community. CPWI is administered by the Washington State Health Care Authority, Division of Behavioral Health and Recovery, through federal grants from SAMHSA, the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Service Administration. We, our coalition, promotes campaigns such as the Start With One and Lock Save Lives campaigns, bring an awareness to our community about prescription drug misuse and the importance of safe storage. We do drug take back events and have done community town halls on various subjects. We work with various agencies and organizations to determine the needs in our community and develop and implement strategies which promote healthful changes in our community. Our coalition members are individuals who share the same goals of reducing risk factors and promoting a healthy community. You all had an earlier <coughs> discussion about some of those risks, and I love the statement, every child is an investment in our future, and we agree with that statement. I'm here tonight to invite you to a meeting to see what we can do together to further this cause. As you know, many hands make light work, and it's important to include as many voices as possible that represent our community as a whole. So I have brought some of my cards and pamphlets for the coalition and would encourage you to contact me uh, when you're ready to sit in at the table. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your work very much. Thank you. Appreciate you being here. Any other in the council room that are here for a public comment? Anybody online that wishes to make a public comment at this time? If not, the next item is executive session and we'll be clearing the council room to, to uh, prepare uh, for the executive session on personnel matters. Before you do that, let's uh, go to extend the meeting. Oh, yeah. Okay. So moved. We moved and seconded to extend our meeting until 9.30. Who is the important second? executive session we need to get done. Let's go. I move to give us a bathroom break. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you need a break. See you later. Yeah, we'll see you later.